Let's go, open up. It's time for parkour. All right, time for my mandatory parkour check. <laughs> Let's get this over with. You're late. You know the deal. You can do the one block jump for the raw chicken, or you can attempt the one block vertical jump for the beer. Here in parkour civilization, nobody goes for the beer. Wait, beer? This is Steve. You might be wondering how he got in this peculiar situation. Well, you see, Steve is actually an artificial intelligence agent and unfortunately for him, he is now stuck in parkour civilization. He will have to start at parkour noob level and race among the ranks to the top, earning the diamond boots and becoming the parkour champion. Steve will have to practice parkour and train until he learns all by himself what is the best way to the top of parkour tower. Speaks a lot about society if you think about it. Our lab <coughs> our agent will be able to learn all by himself thanks to reinforcement learning. Long story short, the AI will observe different things in the environment such as Steve's position, the position of the goal platform, Steve's current platform and so on. The agent will then decide what actions to take and it will get punished for the wrong actions while being rewarded for the correct ones. In a desperate attempt to please his toxic creator, the AI will be trying to maximize his reward, thus taking those actions I deemed to be correct, like jumping on a higher platform. Hopefully, that will result in Steve becoming an undisputed parkour champion and definitely not cause a severe traumatic experience for our artificial friend resulting in yet another broken mind and tormented soul. Yes, yes, that definitely won't happen a little later in the video. Hmm. Besides the observations I mentioned just now, Steve will also have a pair of eyes to help him navigate the environment. Well, actually it's more like few dozen pair of eyes, but you get the idea. Steve will shoot several sets of ray casts in different directions, and once such ray collides with anything in the environment, it will let Steve know what that object was and how far it is. Initially, I used the grid system to collect observations from the map, just like in the island survival video, but that proved to be quite inefficient for this time so I switched to Raycasts. Talking about the map, let me present you the levels. The first level is the Dirt Tower. Here Steve will get a chance to learn the basics without getting overwhelmed by different mechanics. All the platforms on this level are made of solid materials and are quite big, making it easier to land on them, with the most difficult jump being two block horizontal and half a block vertical jump. Once Steve reaches to the top, he will become a parkour pro and will get a pair of well-deserved iron boots to prove that. Next level is the stone tower. As you could have noticed, most of the platforms here ain't that big and the overall jumps are are much more difficult, adding diagonal jumps and even a two block horizontal and one block vertical jump. This shall test the skills of our parkour pro and will prove a real challenge especially if the developer would somehow make a dumb mistake while creating this level. Wouldn't that be fun, huh? Anyways, once Steve gets on top of this tower, he will become a parkour master, earning his own pair of golden boots and access to level 3, the brick tower. Here, two block horizontal and one block vertical jumps are default, but now Steve has a new block to worry about. Ice platforms have much less friction, making them less stable and more difficult to aim your jumps. Steve will need to show some actual precision to complete this stage and become a parkour champion with diamond boots. But wait, there is another level? Oh damn, it is blurred. Well, looks like you'll have to keep watching. So you get the idea, Steve needs to complete three different levels with increasing difficulty in order to become the parkour champion and unlock the final hidden level. But that wasn't always the case. It wasn't always five separate levels. Oh no 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 no. Let me now tell you a story. A story about excitement, confusion, hope, distress and misery, a story about broken minds and broken souls, a story... All right, you get the idea, this idiot's brain broke again. In the very beginning, I had this basic map set up to see if our dum dum was even able to learn parkour. At first it was... well, let's just say it wasn't going too well. 
But after tweaking the rewards and punishments, I eventually managed to get Steve jumping on the first two blocks, but struggling when it came to the bigger jump. Instead of attempting it, Steve settled with jumping from block 2 to block 1 and back to block 2, repeating this until the round ends. It wasn't much, but at least I saw that there is potential for this project, so I made a proper parkour tower where Steve would be challenged with levels of increasing difficulty, however, the initial tower was just one map. All the levels were stacked upon each other, meaning that some failed jumps could make you lose all the progress you've made and Steve would have to basically pass the entire tower in one try. Initially our dude was struggling really bad on the new map, completely ignoring the platforms he is supposed to be jumping on. After spending few more days trying to fix this, I got this AI that was finally showing some signs of neuron activity and even managed to get to level 2 of the parkour tower. With each try it kept getting better and better and happy with the results I went to bed excited to see the results in the morning. And oh boy I had no clue what was awaiting me. I woke up to this dum-dum successfully climbing up to platform 12 and jumping right off it and then repeating the process endlessly. Now that's weird, the AI is rewarded for climbing higher so him deliberately choosing to throw away all his progress and jump to the lower level to become a noob again shows that something is definitely wrong here. Speak a lot about society if you think about it. Well, I did what I always do when AI is not behaving the way I want, I added more punishment. I tried various things like making Steve lose the game once he fell to the bottom level, I tried punishing for staying too long on the same platform, even tried to increase the existence punishment, but believe it or not, nothing helped. Every time Steve would climb up to the same platform and jump right off it, so I decided to change the problematic tile just in case. After all, in parkour civilization, Evbo also got quite a lot of external help, didn't he? Also, in theory, since I reduced the platform sizes, the map is now even harder lol. But don't you worry, it wouldn't be a story about misery if this would have solved the problem, would it now? Instead, this idiot kept being broken in the exact same spot like it was magical. And before you think of anything, no, it wasn't magical, you dum dum. It was identical with all the other blocks. Trust me, I've checked it hundreds of times for hours and hours. I still see the values at night. I need help. Anyways, Steve kept jumping off the exact same block over and over without ever attempting to climb higher. I was so mad at him and decided to do what any sane person would in my place. I started writing an email to Notch and tell him how angry I was. And while anger was flowing in my veins and I was writing my fiery essay to Notch, an idea popped in my head. A dim light on a misty night. What if, just hear me out on this, what if I actually made a mistake? I discarded this foolishness almost immediately, but then my curiosity took over and I decided to check the code. Yeah, I f***ed up, okay? I was basically rewarding the agent based on the tile ID. Platforms positioned higher will have a higher ID, so climbing on a tile with large ID would result in a large reward, and I thought that it is equaled by the fall punishment. But turns out I was only punishing based on the difference Steve fell, so if you do some second grade math and think for a few seconds, you might realize that it actually is pretty profitable to just fall on a lower platform and climb back up, and it seems that our boy has figured out quite the same. I was never this happy to find a mistake in my code, because that meant Steve can now finally train and become a parkour champion, am I right? Am I right? Oh fuck. Of course it didn't work, and guess what, despite changing the block, this idiot still gets stuck on the same damned platform. I'm starting to lose my mind, but I think I still have few ideas that I could try. I have tried everything. I tried spawning this idiot on the third level so he gets to know that there is potential for more reward, but nah, fuck it, let's jump back downstairs and get once again stuck on the same block. Oh, you wanna jump down? Well, I blocked the entire floor, so the only way is up. So now it must train, right? Wrong! It just kept jumping into the wall in the same corner and let me remind you that Steve is getting punished for touching the wall. But it doesn't seem he gives a shit now, does he? Well, I have one last idea, hope it will work. And 
now we're here. So I decided to split each level apart because it seemed he was nailing the first level. So hopefully if we take each level one by one, Steve might actually figure something out. That's what I thought until he once again got stuck, but this time on a platform he easily passed before. Right before I was preparing to throw my PC out the window, Steve managed to overcome this challenge and make his way further to the top. <laughs> well, let's see one full run of his with a better camera. Fearless, Steve starts climbing and doesn't even pause to aim. He just nails every jump perfectly. He already completed half of the map in just few seconds and now he is already at the top. And look closely, he skips the last block and goes straight for the finish, but not in a random manner. He still jumps a bit to the right, so in case he fails the last jump, he at least falls on the block. Now that's pretty smart, and that's pretty dumb lol. I have no clue why he keeps doing that, but I'm sure it speaks a lot about society if you think about that. After long hours of training, Steve has finally become a parkour pro and earned his well-deserved pair of iron shoes. Now time for the stone tower, and this level made me question every single life choice I've ever made. Honestly, I lost count of how many dozens of hours, if not hundreds, I've spent trying to get Steve to learn this map. First it was simply falling. Steve would mostly chill on the ground levels without even attempting to climb higher. He must have figured out that chasing the highs isn't as hype as a simple life without stress. Perhaps we all got to learn something from Steve, but that's beside the point. We ain't here for philosophy lessons, we are here for parkour. So I desperately tried fixing whatever was going wrong here, but little did I know that the worst part was yet to come. After many, many, many different tries, there was this one time when Steve actually somehow managed to learn to advance through the level. His results were getting better and better with each hour of training and once again, full of hope, I went to sleep. Well, guess what? Steve managed to get up to the very last block and kept jumping off instead of finishing the level. Yeah, it almost felt like teasing. I mean, come on, that's literally the last block before the finish. You are supposed to be a dumb AI without consciousness. Stop it. Frustrating as it is, imagine my reaction when after hours of attempts to fix it, I finally realized that on the last platform Steve kept jumping from, I had two different blocks nested inside each other and one of them had a low ID value. That basically meant that Steve got confused on the last block since he thought he lost the progress due to the low ID and jumped down to try the course again. After removing the duplicate block, I tried many times to at least recreate the success of this try, but no matter what I changed, Steve refused to get any higher. He would constantly be stuck at the lower levels and it almost looked like he also gave up. I was getting really desperate, especially considering there are two more levels and those are even more difficult than the stone tower. And since this video was already taking lots of time to make, I decided to split this video into two parts, but not before trying one more time to get Steve to become a parkour master. After about 10 more hours of training, nothing happened. Steve kept being stuck on first four blocks without even trying to get to platform five and further. But wait. I think I have an idea how we can help our boy succeed and for this I will use the brain from that one try that almost worked. Alright, there he goes and stop. Okay, now let's move this a tiny bit and go. Yay! Oh, wait, move a little more. Nice! Steve made it! It's a miracle! And he's gone. Steve has finally become a parkour master, well, kind of, completing the stone tower with a little bit of help. But will Steve be able to overcome his weaknesses, become a parkour champion and unlock access to the secret marble tower? We'll find this out in the next episode of AI Parkour Civilization. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. By being persistent and continuously learning and improving himself, Steve has mastered the parkour basics and slowly but surely reached great heights. Same goes for anything you want to get good at, and acquiring new skills has never been as convenient as it is now thanks to the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Brilliant offers thousands of interactive courses in math, data analysis, programming and AI, all crafted by award-winning teams of teachers and researchers. Just like Steve, you need to practice in order to actually learn, that is why lessons on Brilliant are designed for hands-on experience. 
Doing while learning will help you develop critical thinking skills required for solving all sorts of problems. But unlike Steve, you might not have much free time to learn day and night, and Brilliant has got you covered on this one as well. Their concise lessons allow you to learn from wherever and whenever you want right from your phone. Brilliant recently launched a ton of new data science content, all of which uses real-world data to train you to see trends and make better informed decisions, which is perfect for learners of any level. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org or scan the QR code on the screen, or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!